Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in Power Systems ATS Europe. In this small movie, we're going to look at shared processor pools, release two. We're going to first do the preparation and then create our shared storage pool cluster. Then we're going to add nodes to it. Then we're going to add a disk to the pool. And finally, allocate some thin provisioning disk space to a virtual machine. Let me quickly explain the configuration we're going to use. We have three machines, two Power 6 in the middle of Power 7, which is a dual VIO server machine. These are connected to the same storage area network, and we've assigned LUNs, and they've been zoned so that they're visible to all the VIO servers that will make up the cluster. We're going to initially create our shared storage pool on one particular VIO server. This logically will then have some disk space in it, which we can allocate to our virtual machines. At the back end, of course, it is a group of LUNs. One of those is the repository, and the rest of those will be the data LUNs in which we can allocate space. Then we're going to use the add node commands to extend the cluster across the other virtual I.O. servers. Then we're going to add another disk at the top there, another LUN in the, to the shared storage pool so that it's larger. And then finally we're going to allocate some disk space to a virtual machine called Diamond 9 and that's going to allocate space across the LUNs at the back end. From a logical point of view, we created a logical unit, an LU, in the pool, and this is what the client virtual machine says as its disk, or virtual disk. Right, let's get started. Here's my VIO server. Uh, the machine's called Diamond, and this is VIO server 1. And uh, we're going to use this, uh, well, I've got to say a master node, but uh, once they're all running, they're all equally uh, important. Uh, this is just the node we're going to start on. On this node, then, we have um, two disks at the top here, which is a uh, mirrored root VG for the VIO server itself. And we have four little disks uh, attached. So we have a nice parameter to the uh, LSPV command size, and we get some more information here. So these are my internal disks here. And then I have a bunch of LUNs of uh, rather odd sizes. We're just using some spare capacity on our DS4700. We'll use the smallest one for our repository disk. Probably a bit of overkill, but that's the best we've got at the moment. Okay, um, I've made sure that these uh, disks are all um, no reserve and they've been zoned and assigned to the other VIO servers we're going to use in their cluster. One of the other VIO servers is on the same machine, so we've got a dual VIO system, and on two other machines we've got uh, just one. Um, we've installed, this is a completely standard install of um, the VIO server 2213. Um, in previous releases, it then used to say the fix pack and things, and service pack numbers. It doesn't at this release. We have to make sure that uh, the all the VO servers uh, involved uh, are using full host names, not the shortened uh, host name. So here's my cluster command: uh, cluster create, obviously, and give it a name: Galaxy. Uh, same uh, details as we had in our previous movies. I'm going to use this um, smallest disk in here. Uh, HDS4 for my repository disk, this repo physical volumes, then the storage pool physical volumes is 2 and 3. I'll leave HDS5 out just so that I can show the command to add a new disk to a storage pool. Um, we've got the storage pool name, of course, Atlantic in our case, and then the host is actually involved. It's uh, The syntax of, of the cluster command makes it look like you could actually create the cluster on multiple VIO servers at the same time. That won't work. Okay, so um, down at the bottom here we have a little um, N1 running, just so we can keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, currently it's using 1% um, of a CPU just ticking over in the VIO server. So, give that a go now. No, we didn't complete. The PV is currently in use, HDisk4. Now, I do actually know what that is. It was in use with my previous storage pool, so I now have to go and run a command to make sure that those uh, disks are no longer look like they're in use. And we have a special command to do that. So I've just typed in here, now we have the clean disk minus R and minus S that clears off the um, storage and cluster details from a disk ready for reuse with other purposes. And so we'll just run that now. Are we sure? Yes, well, we are. Be very careful with this command because you can make major problems on your disks. So be very careful. Let's clear the screen. Here's our cluster command and we'll rerun that. Yeah. 
Okay, there we go. All nice and done. Let's confirm that's okay with uh, the cluster list command. And we have a galaxy here, good. And if we run the uh, similar command with the status of galaxy, it says it's all okay. And we have one node, excellent. So now we need to add a second node. Let's do that now. Clear the screen. So we'll add the second node, cluster add node, and the cluster involved, and the host name, which is VO Server 2, the other VO server in the same machine. Okay, that worked nicely. We'll run that status command, and we can see we have two. Excellent. We're just adding the third and fourth node now. They took about a minute each, and it's just finished. Okay, and we'll do our status. So we find our four machines online. You can see the first two have the same um, serial number here. Because they're in the same box, as a dual VR server, and these two are on different uh, machines. Let's clear the screen. Let's have a quick look at our pool. And we can see we have uh, just a 32 gigabytes, so that's two 16 gig drives. So let's increase the size of our shared storage pool by adding to the cluster and the storage pool HDisk5. We could do this from any of the machines, provided it's the same LUN underneath. Okay, my fault. Change. So the command is chsp, change storage pool. It's going to look at that HDisk5, check that it's available, then it's going to check that it's available on all the other nodes of the cluster. Of course, it may not be the same HDisk number. And then it's going to mark it up as busy in, a, in the cluster and update the repository so that it knows when it starts next time that this disk is part of the cluster. OK, now if we look at our storage pool, we have 20 more gigabytes. That disk was about 20 gig. OK. All right, clear the screen again. Let's bring up the HMC for this machine called Diamond and the virtual machine called Diamond 9. Let's bring up the details and look at the virtual adapters. It's saying here the client here is connected to Diamond um, VI Server 1 and it will arrive on um, virtual slot 19. Okay, I'll just get rid of those. If I run a LS map miners all, um, here we can see here's the virtual slot 19, it's V host 7. So if I sign some dispatch to V host 7, it will go onto that LPAR. So to create the device and attach it to the right virtual machine, we're using this make backing device to storage pool command, the usual cluster name and the storage pool. Then we want to allocate the size, which is uh, 16 gigabytes. Then we give it a name. This is for our convenience. Um, it could be unique or it could be uh, duplicated, but uh, I'm just using VD for virtual disk and Diamond 9 for the LPAR and A for the first one. Then we have to connect it to the right virtual adapter as we just discovered that uh, on the lines above. So it's uh, vhost7. Jeesh, that was quick. What was that? Half a second or so. Okay. Now if we go back to the HMC we can actually see how we could do it from uh, the graphical user interface. So here's our HMC. If I go up a level to servers select diamond and we go down to configuration virtual resources virtual storage management we can then look at a particular VO server or we could go to galaxy which is our shared storage pool we'll query that and here we can see our virtual disk for diamond 9 from the storage pool called Atlantic and it's 16 gigs and it's of type uh, thin provisioning if I put a minus thick on the end then uh, it would have gone thick provisioning and actually given us the disk space now 
at the moment has given us no disk space until we actually uh, write to the disks so then it gets allocated. Well that's it for this movie. I hope you've seen that once you've got those disks online to the VO servers, the actual shared storage pool is very quick to start up and get going, and particularly quick to allocate disk space.